Hello. We have been discussing the dual nature of electromagnetic radiations. Some properties of electromagnetic radiations can be explained by their wave nature. But some properties cannot be explained by the wave nature. And hence, the particle nature of electromagnetic radiations also was suggested. So let us move on. What were these properties? The first one was diffraction. Diffraction is the property of a wave by which when a wave comes and touches the surface of a solid, it bends slightly from uh, its normal angle. Whatever angle it touches the surface of a solid, it bends from it slightly. Now, an example of this is that um, when you have light falling on an object and you see the shadow behind the object, if light were a particle nature, it falls over the, uh, the object, the shadow should have very sharp lines, it should be very sharp. But the edges of a shadow are usually slightly blurred. Now that can be explained on the basis of diffraction that when light falls on the object, it does not go straight, rather some of it bends slightly due to its wave nature and therefore the shadows are mildly blurred at the edges. Similarly, if you look at the moon, where the moon is reflecting the light of the sun that falls over it at night, look at the edges of the moon again they're not very sharp you will find that it's slightly blurred so this can be explained on the basis of diffraction where waves they come and when they touch the surface of a body they bend ever so slightly and this bending of light or waves is known as diffraction the next property is interference waves interfere let me just show you an example. Here is a wave that's traveling. And there's another wave that comes from the other direction. If this wave comes and joins the previous wave in such a manner, there are two ways how this can happen. This was the original wave and, okay, we can do it this way. And this is the other wave. So this one is continuing in this direction and that one is continuing in the other direction. That is one possibility that when the waves they come and they interfere with each other, there are two possible ways. One or rather there are two possible extremes. One is where the crest of one falls over the trough of the other and the trough of one falls over the crest of the other. The other possibility is that a wave is going in one direction and the other one that comes, it comes in such a way that it, the crest of this wave falls over the crest of the other and the trough of this wave is falling over the trough of the other. So both of them are in sync with each other. When such an interference occurs, what happens? The resultant wave is reinforced. The two waves, they have an effect on each other and they reinforce the energies of each other. And when they do so, we find that the resultant wave has the crests and troughs which are higher than the original ones. So the wave is amplified. When, when the crest falls over the crest and the trough falls over the trough, the two waves start moving in synchronization with each other. And when they are synchronized, they, the resultant wave is an amplified wave. This is known as resonance and this type of interference is known as constructive interference. On the other hand, when the wave, they come and they fall on each other in such a, they interfere in such a way that the crest of one is falling over the trough of the other. Both of them are opposite, they are opposite motions. One is moving upwards, the other is vibrating downwards. So what happens? The resultant, the interference causes a resultant wave which is a vector sum. The resultant wave is always a vector sum of the two uh, interfering waves. So this resultant wave would have the crests and troughs which would be less than the original ones which means that the wave resultant wave would be weaker than the original waves. So this is known as destructive interference. 
So interference is seen by light. And let us let me give you an example of uh, such resonance or interfering waves, although not in the case of light. When, when vehicles travel over a bridge, there's a speed limit on the bridge. And that speed limit is because the vehicles have a vibration of their own as they're moving. And the bridge, which is a suspended uh, body, it also has a vibration of its own. So when it is vibrating and the vehicles that are moving on it also add to that vibration, if the interference is constructive, then what happens? The bridge starts vibrating at a dangerous level. The vibration is so much more that there is a chance of the bridge giving way. Therefore, the, there's a speed limit on the bridges so that resonance does not happen and rather destructive interference occurs and the bridge remains stable. So that is interference and diffraction, both the properties which are shown by light and both of which can be explained by the wave nature of light. But after this, the following properties could not be explained by the wave nature of light. They indicated that light is not only wave-like in its nature, it is particle-like too. And not only is it particle-like, it also brought forth the concept of quantization of energy. We'll come to that later. The first was property or the phenomenon that was observed was black body radiation. When you heat up an object, it starts giving out light when it's very, very hot, about 4000 Kelvin. Above it, it comes to, uh, above these temperatures, it comes to the visible range and the object that you're heating starts glowing. For example, if you take an iron rod and you heat it, it starts glowing. So this glowing of objects is at certain temperatures is releasing the radiations. A black body is an ideal body which is supposed to absorb all radiations. So when you heat it up, whatever an object has absorbed, when you heat it, it, it gives out the same radiations. So an, a black body is one which absorbs all radiations. Therefore, on heating, we would expect it to release all radiations. So that is what happens in black body radiation. And black body radiation could not be explained on the basis of the wave nature of light. Photoelectric effect is a phenomenon where uh, when you have a metal object and you bombard the metal object with a radiation, the metal object, uh, I mean electrons from the metal, they get ejected. These electrons are known as photoelectrons. Why? Because when light, what is photon? Photo is light. When light fell over the metal, it threw out, it pushed out the electrons and this is known as, these electrons are called photoelectrons and the phenomenon is known as photoelectric effect. Imagine if there's a ball and there's just a wave coming, can the wave simply push out a ball at high speeds which is attracted, which is strongly held because electrons in the metal are attracted to the nucleus which is positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Therefore, whatever is coming cannot be a soft wave. It has to be a solid object which has force and which hits the electron and pushes the electron out of the, uh, of the atom. Therefore, if light can push an electron out of the metal surface, it means that light obviously has some particle nature. There is particle which is hitting it and therefore it is pushing the electrons out. That was photoelectric effect, which could again not be explained on the basis of wave nature of light. The next is variation of heat capacity of solids as a function of temperature. Heat capacity is the amount of heat which has to be given to an object to raise its temperature by one degree Celsius. And it has been found that when you provide heat to solids, what happens? In a solid, the atoms are fixed in space. They cannot bodily move from one place to another, but they are fixed in their places. All they can do is they can vibrate to and fro about their own position. So, when you provide heat to a solid, 
what happens the particles which are present inside that is the atoms or the molecules that it's made up of they are fixed at their position but this energy that is given to them to the uh, atom or uh, sorry to the solid it is absorbed by the atoms to increase their kinetic energy that is to increase their vibration and to increase the potential energy which increases the which raises the temperature of the um, of the substance this now variation of heat capacity how much heat has to be given to raise the temperature of that substance by one degree depends on the temperature at which the solid is already present this also could not be explained on the basis of the wave nature of uh, light then the last property is the line spectrum of hydrogen we know that hydrogen has only one electron and as i told you that all matter when it absorbs energy and you allow it to release energy later when you heat it up and you allow it to give out energy if it absorbs light certain frequencies of light when it releases on heating it gives out the frequencies they should be the same frequencies the electron in a hydrogen atom there's only one electron so whatever energy it absorbs it should release only one energy and therefore when hydrogen when you record that energy being given out by hydrogen on the electromagnetic spectrum it should form only one line but hydrogen was found to form a series of lines and this could not be explained on the basis of the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation this rather could be explained if electromagnetic radiation had not only particle nature but also that it had quantization of energy this was a concept which was developed later we will now discuss these properties one by one we will now talk about black body radiation in the next video thank you for watching